Galactic Standard Date Year 11356 Day 96 Sol Standard Date 4th of the 8th 3267 Sylvan said his goodbyes to his family after giving them the full story of what happened, as well as letting them know that he was going away for a long time. Alarms blared throughout the shelter. Emergency broadcast system, automatic announcement. The Xeno filth has been eradicated. If your city was attacked, please make way to your nearest military installation. You may be temporarily relocated to a refuge city. Sylvan smiled and stood up with his family. After giving them one last hug, he walked out of the bunker. The guards didn't try to stop him, nor did the people question it. All but one family breathed a sigh of relief as green and black energies formed around his body before he took to the skies. He flew back to the capital and hovered over the city for a moment, taking it all in. With a sigh, he turned towards the palace and slowly floated down to the front steps of the palace. The guards recognised him by his admiral's regalia and various medals, though they were all twisted by the veil. They stepped aside wearily and admitted him through the front door as Sylvan snapped off a salute. As he walked through the entrance hall of the palace, he watched the members of all the top guilds as well as the military running around like a swarm of angry Rosarians. One by one they noticed him, and the bustling swarm was now slowing to a standstill as they stared at him with a mixture of confusion and fear. He walked towards the sea of people in front of him and singled out Jezago. Hey, Jezago, what is all this? Do you need any assistance before I leave to serve my lord? Jezago stiffened and shuffled their feet. His ears flicked and he was flicking his tail all over the place. Well, what do you mean they fucked? He squeaked. Sylvan narrowed his eyes and said, what the fuck? What? What are you talking about? Jezago dipped his head in embarrassment before waving Sylvan over to a side room. Once inside, Jezago visibly deflated, slumping onto a chair. Sylvan, goddess, sorry for being such a mess. I just saw Commander Lekitty post Kratos with a hu human, he said the last few words in a whisper. Sylvan's jaw dropped. It, it was Leonidas, wasn't it? I met him before and the first thing he said was that he loved me and that I was adorable. Jezago shuddered. But they are so large. There's no way, right? No. It happened so clearly there was a way. Worse yet, the Empress has forbidden me from inquiring about how intercourse was actually feasible between the two. I, I'm a man of science. I have to know. For science, of course. Sylvan sighed. Sure, buddy, sure. Now... Tell me what is happening for the restoration of our cities and the relocation of our people. I heard that we have refugee camps of sorts already. Jezago leaned back in his chair and sighed. Not only did the humans come through and enact wholesale slaughter on the few hundred remaining Azarians and fuck the commander, but they also used their shipboard nanites to construct entire towns in the last few hours. Somehow they can just scoop up some dirt, throw it into a pile of nanites and poof, a fucking house emerges. It goes against all of our known laws of physics, but apparently, they have nanites that are capable of matter conversion. Oh, and all their ships are made strictly from these nanites. The whole ship. Sylvan shrugged his shoulders. They are ruled by the god and goddess of death. Literal gods. Science probably doesn't even apply to them, so I am not surprised. Jezago tilted his head at Sylvan's words before he really looked at him. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. What the fuck? What happened to you? What is this talk about gods and goddesses? What the what? As soon as he finished those words, Sylvan started laughing his ass off. You, you, you just realized? <laughs> you were so focused on Lakitty's encounter with E.T. that you literally didn't notice that I have gotten so tall that your head only comes up to my chest, or the fact that my fur color has drastically changed, or I have blades with claws. <laughs> you need to find yourself a lover. Perhaps one of the Spartans might be interested. Jezago spotted an embarrassment. Ah, I can't help it. Leave me alone and tell me what the hell you meant by gods and goddesses, he yelled, while trying to hide his ears. Sylvan clutched his stomach as he doubled over with laughter. After a few seconds, he took a deep, cowing breath and straightened up to give Jezago an answer. After an hour of him explaining all, he knew about the veil and his benefactors that he could to Jezago. He clapped him on the shoulder and left the room. The hall was rather clear now for some reason, and he had no trouble heading towards Latiska's room. Once at her door, the guards let him through, but quickly followed him in. The guards announced his presence, and Letizia looked up from her tablet. Ah, using the front door now. How quaint. What do you need? The guards' eyes widened as they stared between Sylvan and Letizia, 
before they slowly shouldered their rifles and waited for shit to go down. Sylvanda so shrugged nonchalantly and walked over to her desk, being careful to show no sign of hostility. He didn't want a bloodbath to be his departing gift. He knelt in front of her. Empress Letizia, I am here today to give you my official resignation from the Navy. I am leaving our glorious empire behind for the sake of a higher purpose. It is not out of spite for you, nor is it out of dissatisfaction with the Felis. It is simply because God calls to me. I must go to my master's side and aid him in this war. Letizia sighed and sat up in her seat. Your resignation is accepted. I will not strip you of your titles or your name. You will always be accepted here, but please come back on occasion. Sylvan and the guards all looked up wide-eyed to the Empress, as if they couldn't believe her words. Sylvan, for his part, bowed to Letizia, and walked out of the room with a simple, Goodbye, Letizia.